Have you ever dreamed you could fly? Not in a plane or a hot air balloon, but totally free, like a butterfly. If a caterpillar can develop wings and take flight, just imagine what we could achieve. Meanwhile, we hold on to the dream of flying, free of passports and borders, above valleys and rivers. Nature possesses great treasures, which she lovingly bestows on all her creatures. But it seems as if a secret of great beauty is hidden in the life of butterflies, particularly in the mysterious migration of the monarch butterfly. Many people have a special bond with these little beings, attracted to their beauty and fond of their bright orange wings. In Quebec, May brings clement weather and the butterflies color our summer. Monarchs have an ephemeral existence, yet surf the wind as if they live forever. By a miracle of life, those born in the last days of summer are blessed with eight more months to live. Monarchs are born exceptional travelers. They all leave in the fall, heading for a volcanic mountain chain. Then, under the Mexican sun, they remain, leaving us enthralled by such beauty and mystery. For a better understanding of their life, let's join them on their journey for one full year. Within this microscopic egg, mother of pearl hides a caterpillar that will uncurl within three or four days of being laid. Eating tons of food as they mutate, they will reach 3,000 times their original weight. The soft, slimy tissues are protected by a skin that does not give which will change five times while they live. With six pairs of eyes to detect light, movement, and spies, the caterpillar spends its days on milkweed, which provides food and all it'll need. All summer long, milkweed grows on wasteland, along country roads and ditches. Cardinalides makes its sap so toxic that all it takes is just one lick to make most animals very sick. Not so the monarch. It is immune. If a bird should dare eat a monarch butterfly or caterpillar, it would instantly suffer from the plant's poisonous treat and be sure to repeat this meal never. The viceroy mimics the monarch and takes advantage of its colors to fool its predators with skill. Just the sight of it makes them ill. Caterpillars also hang out all over the cities. When the time comes, it takes a J position in bungee experimentation. Hanging by a silk thread it has woven and fixed by a tiny hook, it sheds its skin one last time. All around in silence, life prepares itself for a miracle. To rid itself of its shriveled skin, the monarch performs a rare choreography. Mm -hmm. 
slowly as the swaying ceases, the soft tissue hardens, and nature, like a jeweler, creates her masterpiece. A remarkable gold-spotted emerald chrysalis. Then, inside, a mysterious alchemy takes place, and out of this stew of cosmic cells, a second form bursts forth from the same life. When the chrysalis darkens and the wings become visible, the butterfly leaves its transparent home. Humanity is deeply intrigued by such spectacular metamorphosis. Perhaps it provides a precious clue to solving the mystery of life and death. Once born, these little guys must strive against all odds just to survive. Two monarch migrations exist in North America, both separated by the great Canadian Rockies. One goes from Canada's east coast to Mexico, another develops on the west coast, from British Columbia to California. Monarchs never cross the Rockies, but are there some hiding there? Not a single monarch in the Rockies. In Quebec, summer is still at its best, and the wind blows into the harvest, cooling down gradually, day by day. In late August, the last monarch offspring will, for eight more months, be on the wing, then leave for a foreign land so far away. But how do they know where to hibernate? There might be a scientific explanation. Perhaps, due to genetic encoding, monarchs are born navigators, flying without compasses and altimeters for more than 6,000 kilometers. Perhaps the direct knowledge of the winter location is transmitted genetically to each generation. Now it's time to harvest the hay, and the last of the summer heat releases the cicada's melody so sweet.
Nature's colors have turned so bright as darkness encroaches on daylight. Monarchs start hearing the call of the wild. Everywhere in the Laurentians, solitary monarchs are preparing to leave. It's time to heed the call. They fly above suburbs and big cities, going southwest. In Montreal, the Insectarium supplies monarch kits. To see with your own eyes, caterpillars transforming into butterflies. Once their wings are tagged, the monarchs are set free. They can then be traced in Mexico. It's a joint initiative with Monarch Watch in Texas. These students are new immigrants to Canada. They may not speak English or French, but they do understand the language of butterflies. Restless, they came from so far away and cannot find the words to say how happy, sad, or fragile they feel. Like the monarch, they just had to leave. The language of nature is universal, and monarchs are a symbol of unity through diversity. Elsewhere, in another world, other monarchs are being set free. Behind barbed wire, the men are trapped, but the butterflies are free. Wings and tattoos clashing like taboos. In this prison, the monarch's presence is a form of zoo therapy. In a specialized school, this teacher takes her time to show the children this butterfly so they can be friends. A simple insect can be scary to a defenseless child. When she tags the butterfly and immobilizes its wings, it's powerless, just like this boy, trapped inside his body. Calm and silent, it bids them farewell. That day, something happened, something intangible, something invisible to the eye.
nobody could have guessed when releasing that butterfly that it would return of its own free will and stay with the kids over an hour, as if to give them a share of happiness. It could have flown away, but it preferred to stay and grace them with its presence and the softness of its wings. Why is it that monarchs touch so many people's hearts? After all these special encounters, the monarchs all leave like solitary souls, heading southwest from Montreal to the Great Lake Erie. They fly to Point Pelee National Park. This is Canada's most southerly tip, a bright, vegetable and tobacco colored strip. For many migratory species, Point Pelee is a port of call, a place to stop and rest in the fall. For monarchs, Lake Erie is as vast as the ocean. They all reach the lake on their flight path, skirting its banks like a seashore until they find the peninsula. Monarchs generally travel alone, but when the wind's against them, they take shelter in trees. On the third day, as the sun begins to rise, hundreds of monarchs set off. They'd been held captive there by a strong southerly wind. Now they dry their wings in the warmth of the sun. Other places outside the park are also launching points for the monarch but none provide such good conditions for safely reaching their destination. Along the park's peninsula lies a string of islands like this one, which links Lake Erie to the United States. Here, tired butterflies can rest their little wings. While one monarch migration flies towards the Mexican sun, another heading for the mythical California coast has begun. Biologically speaking, it's an important time of year. Birds, whales, and monarchs come here on their way as they're traveling. After flying over 3,000 kilometers from southwestern Canada, monarchs arrive to overwinter from Marine County to Baia.
in Santa Cruz, the first destination, Natural Bridges State Park is well known for protecting the monarch. But there are also unknown spots like wasteland and vacant lots that secretly shelter a host of winged visitors. Early next morning, Butterfly Town spreads its wings, Pacific Grove. Roe is a devoted volunteer of the organization Friends of the Monarchs. For these people and the rest of the community, living here means living a wildlife dream. People here believe in a cause and have fought to preserve a land that bears sacred trees covered with tiny orange wings. Here's the story of Pacific Grove Sanctuary. Long ago, it was a military academy, which was later turned into a hotel. In 1990, the landowner wanted to cut the trees to build condominiums. That's when the community gave her an ultimatum. Over a million dollars had to be found to save the butterflies' sacred ground. So they wrote and called and sent lots of faxes, and citizens agreed to raise the taxes by means of a municipal bond. Beauty is priceless. Dr. Lincoln Brower was one of the men who championed the cause and encouraged them. After more than 40 years of research, he's developed a deep bond with the monarchs. The monarch is a living masterpiece of timeless artistic genius. And it's no use valuing works of art if we can't also protect and cherish such natural beauty. Along the Big Sur coastline, near the ocean shore, other butterflies charm the eyes with the beautiful design of their wings. In San Simeon, behind a store backed with eucalyptus trees, monarchs are gently swaying in the ocean breeze. November. It's All Souls Day. Tiny orange wings are but a memory. They've flown like angels to their destiny.
Mexico, people celebrate the Day of the Dead on a 24-hour spread. They call it El Día de los Muertes. Folks gather and remember their loved ones, departed forever, offering them the beauty of flowers, candles, and poetry. On that sacred day in November, Monarchs arrive like a prayer. People believe that these butterflies are returning souls in disguise. Para que esté bajo tus pies, voy a cortar tus rosales. Y en tu corona de reina, pondré como joyas mi vida y mi amor. In Mexico, they're preparing for the holidays. In a little school in Ocampo, children are anticipating the upcoming festivities. Ya, ya vieron la mariposa todavía no, ya la vieron? Ya. Sí. ¿Ya les va quedando bonita o todavía no? No. Observenla cómo está la mariposa. In the small town of Angangueo, people are delighted to see that the monarchs have alighted. These great travelers rest here a while before taking possession of their sanctuaries in the mountains bordering town. The day is dawning on the desolate hills. Clear cut is spreading so fast devastating foothills. Farmers aren't wealthy and their options are few. So what else are they to do besides clear-cutting to cultivate their land? Sadly, erosion makes the soil too poor to produce quality corn or oats. And as more and more trees are felled, the monarch's habitat is threatened. This high altitude ecosystem is delicate and getting weaker as the forest disappears. If this goes on, in less than 20 years, the butterflies won't have any shelter to protect them from bad weather. Their overwintering sites could be totally destroyed. Touched by the butterfly's plight, many people have chosen reforestation as a peaceful way to fight. Jose Luis is a Mexican tree grower. He created a non-profit foundation, enabling lots of trees to be planted. Other members of the Mexican community, plus the public and private sector, and environmentalists the world over, have accomplished similar missions, planting millions of trees by hand with loving care. The entire sanctuary is privately owned by farmers. 
The challenge facing the Mexican government is to protect the butterfly's habitat while helping the community flourish, thanks to its natural resources. El Rosario Sanctuary offers an astonishing sight. Millions of butterflies have fluttered down to quench their thirst at a stream. It's easy to imagine just how great it must have felt to make the scientific discovery of the first butterfly sanctuary. For many years, Canadians Fred and Nora Urquhart and a legion of volunteers had searched for the destination of the monarch's migration. Biologists knew that these butterflies flew over the Texan border, but nobody knew where they went. One day, Kenneth Brugger, one of the Urquhart's team, was scouting through the Mexican hinterland with his Mexican wife Catalina and a local guide. They discovered the key to a great natural mystery in the heart of a coniferous forest. It was one of the greatest wildlife discoveries of the century. At last, we knew where the monarchs went when they left Canada. If there is in this world an enchanted place, it is definitely here among these mountains, which embrace beauty and grace. When people heard of this fascinating discovery, specialists from the world over came to see this remarkable treasure. There was a hesitation to reveal the sanctuary's location, but many believed it would be good for ecotourism. Business flourished at the foothills, selling crafts, souvenirs, and meals. These days, clandestine deforestation is attracting much attention because the sanctuaries are now in danger. Although the government passed legislation forbidding deforestation, too many trees are still disappearing. There's so much more to do to save the monarch's overwintering habitat. thought they live off fat reserves in their abdomen. In February, the weather's bleak, and by now the butterflies are very weak. They lack the strength and energy to fly back up to the tree canopy. They will probably end up being chewed by starving predators looking for food. Their life hangs by a thread, and if there's rain falling, worse still, hail bombing, millions of drenched butterflies will be doomed to die.
Spring sees creatures by the pair, and an ode to life fills the air. There's an urge to love everywhere. Now the monarchs are getting frisky and are ready to mate passionately. After several months of abstinence, they'll unite in an aerial dance and will embrace with fervor for as long as 16 hours. Other butterflies also feel the same urge. After all this commotion, monarchs feel exhaustion. The females bid farewell to their lovers to fly across the Texan borders, searching out the first milkweed where they can lay their eggs to feed. Destiny calls, and the monarchs fly over the streets of Angangueo. They'll never see this town again, ever. But in eight months' time, folks will see their courageous progeny fulfilling the life cycle of the monarchy. Many monarchs will even roam above Mexico City, saying goodbye to millions of people. Lifted by the wings of spring, monarchs fly toward a Texas in full bloom where poppies sway in the breeze, telling tales of longhorns, cowboys, and the oil myth. In southern Texas, the Great Plains meet the Mexican Chihuahuan Desert. The Rio Grande River runs along the border like a nourishing bloodstream. Countless birds of various species and a half of North America's butterflies fill these subtropical skies. All my life I've been wandering On all kinds of roads I've been roaming Looking for peace of mind It ain't so hard to find If you feel the wind On the road I heard the silence, the small town music and the bird song, and the sky was so immense, I felt I could get a chance, cause I heard the wind, I felt the wind. on the road to hill country, it seems the fields are ablaze with a multitude of wild flowers. In Burney, a charming country village, this cat is watching strange activities. Yeah. I work day and 
night I work hard and fight To have a better life For me and my wife Baby, wish I could fly Like a butterfly Oh, baby, wish I could fly Take you up to the sky Hummingbirds looked more delicious to him. Close to Bernie is the Cibolo Nature Center. A river runs right through this place, embracing people's lives with nature's grace. The river bank is lined with giant cypress. These trees stand tall, inspiring nobleness. Volunteers and butterfly lovers scrutinize the milkweed plants, looking for hidden eggs and monarch caterpillars. In Austin City, at the Lady Bird Johnson Flower Center, another group does the same work. They hope to collect data and little critters that will help them understand the monarch. Usually, a female lays one egg per plant, but exceptionally, it's possible to see many tiny pearls stuck on the same milkweed plant. Near Fredericksburg, a wild turkey struts for hours while an exhausted monarch drinks nectar from flowers. Its life is slipping away, and it'll take another two or three generations for the monarch to reach its Canadian destination. Meadows in Quebec flower with the promise of new life and the sun's warm caress. Many butterflies already thrive as if summer had arrived. And the song of the loon foretells that monarchs will be back soon. Summer makes a dramatic entrance with its green carpet and thunderstorms.
Baby, let's dance all day, all night. Kick off your shoes, forget your blues. Summer makes you want to dance, to go out, to garden, and makes you feel. As light as a butterfly. Following the monarchs as they migrate across three countries of one continent, we catch a glimpse of an invisible thread that connects all people, however different their lives. Ha sido apresurado por el tiempo. Has viajado, empujado por el tiempo. Has volado y planeado sobre millones de flores, encantado por sus colores. Ser gitano es tu destino. Je suis parti, pressé par le temps. J'ai voyagé, poussé par le vent. J'ai volé, virevolté, plané au-dessus de milliers de fleurs, charmé par toutes leurs couleurs. Bohémien, je poursuis mon chemin. La 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 la. Quiero partir. La 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 la. Para vivir. Y yo no puedo explicarme por qué parto. Creo que yo tengo un alma de gitano. Ne sachant pas où j'allais, je volais, je rêvais d'atteindre la terre du soleil, découvrir au réveil des millions comme moi. Grande es tan fuerte en mi corazón que toda mi vida yo he buscado la libertad. Él tiene un alma de gitano. Je ne sais pas ce qui a pu prolonger ma vie si longtemps, m'amener si loin et pourtant d'autres que moi vont revenir sur cette terre que j'ai aimée pour une année. 